The following is a quick demonstration of how to use the hatch command in AutoCAD to uh, set up a, a flooring pattern. Let's say, for instance, in this project, we want to put a, a floor pattern in this living room area here. And this living room connects to this hallway here up to the front door. And then there's another hallway here that wraps around the corner back to this location here. And you had to put a floor pattern in here. Well, the hatch command here launches this ribbon across the top of the screen. And one of the options here is to uh, pick points. This allows you to pick a point inside the area that you want to put the hatch pattern in. And so, for example, in this area, if I were to use pick points and put my mouse here and, and click on this area, nothing happens. And the reason being is that because the entire area that you're trying to hatch has to be completely visible on the screen. And right now, part of this room is off the screen here. So it's always best practice just to zoom, do a zoom window around the area you want to focus on. And then you can see the entire area. Nothing is cropped off the screen. And if I try it again with the hatch command, oops, the hatch command, and put a pick point inside here. You'll see it'll put the hatch pattern in here, but you'll notice that it's going to go around the doors, which is not correct. And it actually, you lost this wall that's right here. Let me hit escape to cancel. I'm going to click on this hatch and hit delete. And you notice this wall here became absorbed by the hatch pattern. And I don't want that to happen. So there's two things need to happen. One, you need to put a boundary on the floor where you'd like the hatch to stop. I've already added a couple here. There's a line here. There's a line across here. So when Revit or uh, AutoCAD encounters that line, it'll stop the pattern. So I should also add one across here and across here. So using the A floor command, I can quickly put a line across here and put a line across here. And this stops AutoCAD from putting the pattern inside this hallway and into the closet. This is sort of setting up a boundary. I'll do another one here. Making sure that it goes from corner of the wall to corner of the wall. I might want to put one here at the front door, corner to corner. And because we don't want the pattern to go into the door swing, we want to hide the doors. So again, here in your layers, you can turn off the door and the door swing. And then now you can see where the pattern is going to go. It's going to go up to this boundary here and stop. But it has to be tested. For example, here, if I type B hatch, and I click here, it went inside this closet. And again, it grabbed that wall. So the problem here is the fact that this does not have a boundary. So if I draw a line here, that now has a boundary. So the the hatch doesn't go into this room. It's as if the hatch was water spilling in a room. It will go wherever the boundary leads it. And if you don't have a, a, a line to stop it, it'll continue. So this is probably a better scenario here. But if you try again, put a hatch inside here, you'll notice that yet again, it grabbed this wall. Although the hallway and quarters are fixed, but suddenly the ele the the stairs and the walls around this area, this closet here, got absorbed. So there's a problem in your drafting. There's a problem somewhere in your drawing that's causing the water, as if that's what Hatch is doing, to spill into these areas. I'm going to click on the Hatch and delete. And I want to be on the hat A floor Hatch layer, by the way. So one way to find out where the trouble is is to divide the room, literally by drawing lines through the room. For example, that and putting hatch in each of these quadrants. And if the hatch works in those areas, then those areas aren't a problem. So if I type B hatch and put one here, that seems to be OK. It didn't go inside the walls. If I put one in here, again, I have to see it on the screen, BH for B hatch. This one seems to work just fine. It didn't go inside the walls. If I do it here, still no problem. It goes around the furniture. 
And if I go here, suddenly that wall got absorbed. Therefore, the problem is, has something to do with this wall. This wall is problematic in this area that's separated by these temporary lines I drew here. So if I erase these lines, I know that this wall here is trouble. And if I zoom in, you'll notice that it has a small crack opening right there, allowing the hash to go into the space of the wall and absorb into the walls. So I'm going to fill it this, or F, and close that gap. And again, I want to do a zoom window, Z enter, W enter, and draw a window around the area that's being hatched and make sure I can see it on the screen completely. There, I can see the entire thing on the screen. Now, if I do a BH or B hatch, I get the tools here across the top of the screen. I got pick point here. And currently, this is the, it's going to use a pattern. The pattern is this one here, ANSI 31. Well, I have my own pattern I want to use. Otherwise, if you click on this arrowhead, you've got a whole list of patterns you can use. And this one down here opens the entire library of patterns. And you can pick from this list. But if the pattern you're after is more user generated, you decide what the pattern is. And you don't like what these patterns look like. You might want to change this, not from pattern, but to user defined. Now it becomes your pattern. In my case, I want to draw a wood floor, which in this case, I'll make the scale right here, five inches, user defined. And if I click inside here, too quickly, the pattern does that, because again, there must be a crack somewhere. And if I click on this and then delete, I can go back and begin to explore where the drawing failed. Now, sometimes, and for whatever reason, AutoCAD might have a perfect drawing. And other times, it might have an, an issue. In this case, there seems to be a problem with this wall here. This wall is supposed to be continuous, yet there's a gap here. So honestly, this is just a, a case of bad drafting. These walls here should be erased. These should be extended up to perpendicular, or PER, to here. And they meet that wall 90 degrees. This wall needs to be extended up to here. PER to this makes it perpendicular. PER is trim. Enter, enter. And you can subtract these walls here and then fill it, the edges here. And then draw another line. It closes off that opening and that line should be on the A floor layer. That was causing trouble. So when you go back, and I can see the entire space getting hatched, I can type BH for B hatch. I can use pick points, user defined, five inch spacing, and I can pick here. And that places the pattern correctly. Now you have a B hatch in this floor. If I don't like the direction, I can click on this floor, and here's the angle, and I can change it to 90 degrees, enter, and it goes vertical. Or again, I can click on this and make that zero degrees, it goes horizontal. Clicking on a hatch pattern brings back the hatch layer. Even if I escape and get back to the home panel, clicking on the hatch brings you back to this ribbon, showing you all the options you have here, and it says it's user defined. So that gives us a, a nice hatch pattern here. If I want these walls to be filled solid, again, I will zoom into those areas here. And again, I pretend I'm, I'm spilling water into these areas and the water will spill through these areas and find the borders and, and end. So if I want to do a B hatch, BH, and I use pick points, this time instead of user defined, I'm gonna change this to solid. And one of the options here of all your choices of styles is a solid option here. So if I choose solid here, I can place it inside the wall here and there. It found the border of the walls and there weren't any mistakes or cracks in the wall. And this entire area got filled with a solid color. If I click on that pattern, it tells me uh, on the home tab that I'm on the A floor hatch layer, which is the correct layer for wall hatch. It happens to be the same color as the floor hatch. And that gives us a nice pattern.
Let me go into the kitchen for a second. I'm going to delete this existing hatch from the kitchen. Now, you can draw a gridded hatch pattern like this here. Let's say, for example, I want to put one in the kitchen. I would again go to B hatch. I then go pick points, pick it inside this area, and it found the, the perimeter correctly and it went around the island, which is exactly what I want, into this closet. That's all fine, but it's solid. In this case, I, want, I don't want solid. I want user to find here. Now, if I want a floor tile, I probably want to give myself a larger piece of tile. So, for example, 12 inches or, for example, 24 inches can be placed in this area. And here are a bunch of tiles running horizontally. If I want to turn this into a grid, then I'd have to open up properties and use the double command. And there it turns into a grid. And hitting escape, you cancel the command, you're out. And there's your pattern. But you might decide that, for instance, in this design, I'd like a full tile at this door here. This should be a full tile, not a partial tile. I want the first one to begin right here. So in that case, you can click on an existing tile pattern and use the set origin command here and snap to a corner. I got my old stamps on, so I got a little green box right there. When I click, that becomes the very first square there. And there's the new design, the redesign, where there's a full tile against this countertop. Now, you don't have to uh, be stuck with squares. If you like to do something more rectangular, you can do two hatch patterns. You could go into B hatch, and again, use the defined here. But this time, we're going to turn off double. And we're going to make one pattern that's two feet. And it's going to be horizontal, angle zero. And I'm going to pick inside here. And there's my horizontal pattern. And again, I want to start in this corner. So I'm going to hit set origin and click on that corner. And it moved it up. So it starts here with two feet, two feet, two feet. And it goes up this way. And then I hit enter to accept it. Then if I want these tiles to be rectangular, I can put another hatch inside the same location. I can go back to B hatch, pick this area a second time, but this time change the angle to 90, and maybe change the spacing to four feet. Again, I can go to set origin and place the origin right in that corner and hit enter. And suddenly now we got rectangles. This is an example of two hatch patterns. One here running vertically, one here running horizontally, you'll get rectangles. Otherwise, double command is perfectly fine to receive this, this kind of results. Again, if these two wanted to be different patterns, you'd have to create a border somewhere and decide where it's going to transition from one style to the next with a line on the floor that acts as a border. This area here is off limits. We call this not in contract. So there is no border here for me to put a hatch pattern in. So sometimes it just requires you to draw a shape temporarily to put a hatch pattern inside. So for example, here, you could simply type a rectangle and draw a rectangle from corner to corner. And put a hatch pattern inside this zone. And you can have one pattern inside of this entire area and then add more to these little closets here in the hallway. The stair is a different case because if you put a pattern in the stair, it's going to start um, putting the pattern up, up to the edge of the first step. So you might want to turn off the stairs because they should honestly be filled with a hatch pattern to, to denote that it's off limits. It's not in contract, NIC. So I drew a rectangle here temporarily. I've got a stair here and some random areas here that need pattern. So I'm going to type BH for B hatch. I'm going to use pick points. And this time I'm going to use it to find. But I'm going to define this at a 45 degree angle. And I'm going to space the lines apart maybe by 12 inches to see what that looks like. I don't want the lines to be too close together. So now I can put one here. And you see it founds a border up against these walls here. I can put one here. I'm still in the hatch command. I can continue adding more hatch patterns. I can put one here, one here, one here, one inside here, and one inside there. Hit enter. 
Then when you're done, because you don't want to see these borders print, you simply go back in your race. The border and the, the hatch pattern, even though it's built as separate pieces, still acts as one big hatch pattern. And so this is one big continuous hatch pattern. This area looks like it's now off limits. It's not in contract. You turn on your doors. You turn on your stairs. And there, you successfully added a 45 degree user defined hatch pattern here. And again, anytime you want to change this, you simply click. And again, it launches the hatch pattern command here on the ribbon. You can also click on these and right click and go to properties. And properties gives you information as well. And in this example here, they tell you that the pattern is user defined right here. Use user defined. It's at a 45 degree angle. And the spacing is 12 inches. You can change those settings here if you like. You don't have to use the ribbon, but you can if you like. You've got several options. Right click properties is always a good place to look for different objects you can change here. You can change layers, line types, whatever the case may be. Both of these should be set for by layer. Color should be by layer, as an example. I hope this video helps. Uh, feel free to send me an email if you have any questions. Good luck with your projects. Thank you, bye.